Stanley Kubrick's 2001 A Space Odyssey is nothing if not visually stunning. The film owes its aesthetic appeal to Kubrick's visionary directing style, but it also owes several of its most iconic scenes to a few feats of engineering. Think of 2001, and most likely this scene springs to mind. It's a stunning sequence, and it surely felt so when the movie premiered in April 1968, three months before Neil Armstrong landed on the moon, and decades before computer graphics would be able to simulate the same effect. Kubrick commissioned British airplane manufacturer Vickers Armstrong to build a centrifuge that measured about 36 feet in diameter, and cost $750,000. He filmed the Discovery's living quarter scenes in the centrifuge, and staff on set recall actors having to hit specific marks, or else they might fall over mid-scene as the set continued to spin. Despite its high cost, the technique was used in a few films in the years that followed, and even in a music video. Majestic shots of spaceships are another signature of 2001. But some of the scenes were conceptually difficult to film. Kubrick had to figure out how precise spacecraft movements could be made for a master shot and then recreated for additional shots the scene needed. 2001 was a pioneer of using motion control for complex scenes like these. Mechanical rigs automated the camera and ships so the shots could be repeated and different angles could be used in the edit. It also allowed for some extra surprising scenes. CGI has meant that fewer films use the technique nowadays, but there's one obvious beneficiary of 2001's early experiments. Learning the lessons of motion control also enabled one of the film's most impressive scenes. And it also involved a Hitchcock film from a decade earlier. Animator John Whitney invented the slit scan technique for the title sequence of Hitchcock's classic, and he sent a few test samples to Kubrick, whose special effects supervisor Douglas Trumbull adapted the technique for 2001. To achieve the technique, filmmakers focused the camera on a narrow slit, behind which Trumbull put colorful, transparent images of microscopic photos, magazine clippings, and artwork which moved back and forth as the camera zoomed in and out, filming a long exposure. The psychedelic stretching effect that resulted was later used in the Doctor Who title sequences, Star Trek's Jump to Warp Speed, and even inspired the design of the Tesseract from Interstellar. 2001 was also an early pioneer of the front projection technique. A precursor to green screen, the technique enabled Kubrick to film the opening sequence on a soundstage using footage from Africa. In front projection, filmmakers project an image onto a two-way mirror, which reflects the image onto a screen made of scotch light, a reflective material also used to make movie screens. This wasn't actually the first film to use the technique, but 2001 certainly raised its profile. The technique really entered the mainstream a decade later when filmmakers used it to make Christopher Reeve's Superman fly. In recent years, CGI has largely replaced the method, but it's still occasionally used. The filmmakers of 2013's Oblivion used front projection to avoid the need for tedious green screen edits and to light the actors more accurately. Kubrick's attention to detail and the ingenuity of his special effects supervisors made a huge impact on the filmmakers that followed him, and the techniques they invented are still used today, or at least mimicked in digital form. And remarkably, the filmmaking breakthroughs of Kubrick and his team have aged just as well as everything else in his accurate depiction of outer space. Well, maybe not everything. <laughs>